Imagine living in a country where your life is constantly filled with fear, poverty, and injustice. Where the ruling class enjoys all the luxuries of life while the majority of the population struggles to make ends meet. Where speaking your mind or standing up for your rights can get you thrown in jail or worse. This was the reality for the people of Russia in the early 20th century. But in the midst of all the chaos and despair, a spark was lit that ignited a revolution and changed the course of history forever. In this video, we will cover the second part of the chapter, Socialism in Europe and the Russian Revolution. We have already understood the age of social change in the previous video. So, let's get started with the story of the Russian Revolution, a tale of courage, determination, and the power of the people to demand a better future. To study this Russian Revolution, we've divided this video into the following events for your understanding. First, the Russian Empire in 1914, or the composition of the empire. Second, economy and society, or how was structure of Russian society. Third, socialism in Russia, or the spread of a fair and equal society. Fourth, a turbulent time, the 1905 revolution, or the spark of hope for a new era. Fifth, the First World War and the Russian Empire, or an end to the Russian Empire. With that in mind, let's move to the first topic, the Russian Empire in 1914. But before we dive into the details of the revolution, let's take a moment to understand what the Russian Empire looked like in 1914. In 1914, Tsar Nicholas II ruled Russia and its empire. But did you know that the Russian Empire was not just limited to Russia? It included current-day Finland, Lithuania and Estonia, parts of Poland, Ukraine and Belarus. It even stretched all the way to the Pacific and comprised today's Central Asian states, as well as Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan. And what about the religion of the empire? The majority of the population followed Russian Orthodox Christianity, which had grown out of the Greek Orthodox Church. The empire also included Catholics, Protestants, Muslims, and Buddhists. The Russian empire was a diverse and complex place, and it set the stage for the events that eventually led to the Russian Revolution. Let us now explore the second topic that is economy and society. As the sun rose on the vast expanses of Russia at the beginning of the 20th century, the majority of its people were working as farmers and only a few areas had factories. However, things were changing. With the expansion of the railway network in 1890 and foreign investment, the number of factories increased, and many people moved from the countryside to work in these factories. Coal production doubled and iron and steel output quadrupled. But there was a problem. Most of the factories were owned by wealthy industrialists, who paid their workers low wages and gave them long working hours. This created a divide between the workers and their employers. Women workers made up 31% of the factory labor force by 1914 were paid even less than men, which was unfair. Despite these divisions, workers sometimes united to fight for their rights, and they went on strikes to protest against their unfair treatment. In the countryside, peasants worked hard to cultivate most of the land, but they had to share their hard-earned harvest with the nobility, the crown, and the Orthodox Church, who owned large estates. This was different from the French Revolution, where peasants respected the nobles and even fought for them. The conditions were ripe for change, and the winds of revolution were beginning to stir. Now that we've covered the first two topics, let's move on to the third one, that is socialism in Russia. The seeds of political upheaval were sown in Russia long before the February Revolution of 1914. Well, did you know that all political parties were illegal in Russia before 1914? 
The Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party was founded in 1898 by socialists who respected Marx's ideas, but had to operate as an illegal organization due to government policy. While some believed that the peasantry held the key to the revolution, others argued that it was the working class who would drive change. This disagreement eventually led to the formation of the Socialist Revolutionary Party in 1900 which sought to improve the lot of peasants and transfer land from the nobility to those who tilled it. However, the party was far from unified, and it soon split into two factions with vastly different visions for the future of the country. The Mensheviks favored an open party structure, one that was welcoming to all members, while the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, favored a more disciplined and controlled approach. For Lenin, this meant carefully vetting members and controlling their number and quality, even in the face of the repressive society of Tsarist Russia. So, as you can see, the political and social landscape in Russia before 1914 was complex and full of ideas and movements that shaped the country's future. This division eventually paved the way for the October Revolution of 1917 which saw the Bolsheviks seize power and establish the Soviet Union. Also, questions from NCERT are usually asked in the exam from this chapter, so make sure to practice all the NCERT questions. Solutions to NCERT questions are provided on EduRev, which are written by experts. You can also find NCERT solutions of all chapters to score good grades. Let us shift our gears and dive into a new topic that's, a turbulent time, the 1905 revolution. The 1905 revolution marked a turning point in Russian history, setting the stage for the events that would unfold in the coming years. For years, the Russian people had suffered under the rule of Tsar Nicholas II, who was unwilling to share power with parliament or address the needs of the working class. Liberals, social democrats, and socialist revolutionaries joined forces with peasants and workers to demand a constitution during the 1905 revolution, with support from nationalists and Judaists. Fueled by rising prices, declining wages, and bad working conditions, workers and peasants across the country have had enough. Over 1,10,000 workers went on strike in St. Petersburg calling for shorter working hours, better pay, and working conditions. The peaceful procession led by Father Gapon was violently attacked by police and Cossacks, leading to over 100 deaths and 300 injuries, a tragedy known as Bloody Sunday. Despite this tragedy, the Union of Unions was formed, demanding a constituent assembly. The Tsar eventually allowed an elected consultative parliament or Duma, but political activity was severely restricted. The Tsar dismissed the first and second Duma within months of their creation, packing the third with conservative politicians and excluding liberals and revolutionaries. The war initially brought people together in support of Tsar Nicholas II. However, as the conflict dragged on, the Tsar refused to consult with the main parties in the Duma. This left the common people feeling neglected, and their support for the autocracy began to decline. Adding to the Tsar's troubles was the Tsarina Alexandra's German origins and poor advisors, including the notorious monk Rasputin. It was a recipe for unpopularity. As time went on, tensions continued to rise, and people began to speak out against the Tsar's rule. Some even started to call for a revolution, believing that change was necessary. As we wrap up, let's focus on the last topic, the First World War and the Russian Empire. As the winds of change swept through the country, the fate of the Russian Empire hung in the balance. Although Russia experienced initial success in the war, things took a dramatic turn for the worse between 1914 and 1916, as Germany and Austria imposed crushing defeats. This failure harmed the reputation of the government and the Tsar, as soldiers became disillusioned with the war effort. 
industries suffered and the country's railway lines began to break down. With most of the men fighting on the front lines, there were labor shortages at home. Large supplies of grain were sent to feed the army, leaving the people to suffer. By the winter of 1916, bread riots were a common sight, as people struggled to feed themselves and their families. It was a difficult time for the people of Russia, and the situation was ripe for change. And, little did anyone know that the suffering of the Russian people would ultimately lead to a revolution that would change the course of history. So, as we come to the end of this video, we can conclude that the Russian Revolution of 1917 was a turning point in world history, marking the end of the Tsarist regime and the beginning of a new era, in which communism and socialism would play a major role in shaping global politics. It sparked a global conversation about the role of government, the rights of workers, and the nature of power and authority. And while the revolution may have had its flaws and failures, it also served as a powerful reminder that change is possible, that people can come together to demand a better future for themselves and for generations to come. As we continue to study, we will cover the remaining part of the chapter in the upcoming videos. Also, make sure to study chapter notes, watch video lectures and solve MCQ tests of this chapter on EduRev to ensure you score well in your school exams. Not just social studies, you get amazing courses for maths, science, Hindi, English or much more on EduRev. Thank you.